This episode of The Blurred Mob contains explicit language. While we want everyone to enjoy the show, sometimes we may say things that are not appropriate for all ages. So, in other words, mom, dad, granny, we cussing. Discretion is advised. King G. Gross sight. ENT. <laughs> Rock with it. Rock with it. Rock with it. Rock with it. Let me, let me pop my shit. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me pop my shit. Hands up. What's up, y'all? And welcome to the Blurred Mob. I am your host, Foop. If you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other streaming service, make sure you hit that follow button so you can get updates from the mob. Today, we're going to be touching the DC Universe, and it's a triple threat. We're going to be talking about DC Fandom, uh, the animated Injustice movie, as well as Titan Season 3. So joining the mob today, we got McMillian from Gurren Otaku Council, and we got my boy Ryan. So what's up, y'all? What's good, everybody? What's good, y'all? How y'all living? Nothing How y'all living? much. Another Saturday, another day in the life. But before we get into it, I just want to say we've been talking about Marvel a lot um, these past couple episodes, but I want to make it known that DC is my first love. That is what got me into the comics, the shows uh, that made me get into the Marvel Universe and everything else. So this is going to be a pretty exciting episode for me because I love DC. So how are we going to do this, guys? We're gonna start with DC fandom first. Um, then we're gonna go into the Injustice movie, and then we're gonna end with Titans season three. So let's talk DC fandom. So they released a lot of stuff, um, animation, live action movies, as well as trailers for the upcoming video games. And I want to know what's everybody's um top three things that they're looking for and we can do some honorable mentions too but let's go top three so top three for me number one i'm gonna have to start with the animated stuff the catwoman hunted animated uh movie that they're coming out with with elizabeth gillies uh voicing catwoman um so it's like a catwoman batwoman type uh flick the animation looks really good. I think they said they were going for like the anime type animation for it, but the trailer looked really good. Elizabeth Gilly sounds great as Catwoman. So, and I want to say this is going to be the first solo Catwoman movie that we're getting from DC. Well, animated. I think so. Oh, no. So well, she had one before. I forget the name of it. She had another really? one? Mm hmm. She did have one before. I forget the name of it. It might not have been. It could have been a short though, but I believe it was like Selena. Uh, it was like a story about Selena Kyle basically finding uh, these women who are getting sex, uh, sex traffic. But it was an animated thing. It, you might not. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's is not it that, that Batman? That is it that Batman animated series one? Because I know sh- there was like <laughs> a Batman animated series movie about Catwoman. I might it might have been it's been such a long time since I've seen yeah, it, but I believe it's been a that was her I believe that was like the first standalone thing that she had. Well if it's Anime not release. the first standalone thing, I don't remember the first one, but I'm pretty excited for this. Going number two. Um this is gonna be a hard one for me, but I guess the Batman. Um it would be interesting. So I have a a hate and love relationship with Batman movies. My hate is that they keep making Batman movies. <laughs> <laughs> My love is Robert Pattinson doesn't look bad as Batman. They're supposed to be doing like a Batman Gear One type thing with it. So that would be interesting to see. The third thing, and this may be a personal opinion, but Zoe Kravis as Catwoman. I don't know what it is about how they pick the right people to be Catwoman. But DC, if they don't do anything else right, they pick the right people to play Catwoman. 
But we get more villains. Um, Riddler. I don't know who the other guy is. He's supposed to be one of the mob bosses. Penguin, I'm pretty sure, is who he's I'm, supposed to be. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, But the fact that we're getting Riddler again in a Batman movie should be exciting. We're stepping away from the the cliche Batman v. Joker type thing that they always put in the movies. Um, So, that's my number two. My third is Harley Quinn season three. They didn't say when it was coming, but I do like the Harley Quinn show. Um, If I had to pick a number three that we actually know is about to touch down, I would have to say uh, Gotham Knights, and that's the video game. Um, They're touching, it's a Batman game, but they're touching on the side heroes of Batman. So Batgirl, uh, Robin, I think it's the Tim Drake Robin. I didn't see a yes. sword. So mm-hmm. so yeah, it is Tim Drake. Drake. Tim Drake, Red Hood, and Nightwing. And they're going against the Court of Owls. And the Court of Owls is the big Gotham conspiracy group that basically everybody mm-hmm. play everything and everybody plays into it. So yep. that would be mm-hmm. very interesting. I'm excited for it. So that was my top three. What about you guys? Portia, I'm really surprised you didn't say Young Justice Phantoms. So, Young Justice Phantoms is an honorable mention because the episodes are already out. out the yeah, first mm-hmm. two episodes of Young Justice Phantom dropped the same day as DC Dome. So, it's it can't I couldn't put it as something that I'm looking forward to, but that was going to be one of my honorable mentions since okay. they already released three episodes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you want to go next, Ryan, or should I take it? I can go next. Um, My number one, and it was really weird because I didn't expect it to be my number one, was actually the Flash movie. Because I don't usually watch the DC live action seri- TV series. I just never got into them. But see, I, w- I am very interested to see the Flash movie come to life. It actually looked really interesting. The CGI's look really cool. And even though everybody has their gripes about the um, Justice League live action movie, even with the Jack Snyder cut, I still I actually enjoyed the Flash because he was a character in DC that when I look back on my childhood watching Justice League and everything, I always remember it always being Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. You know what I mean? So I am excited to see them expand on Flash. Um, that actually I'm in my number two. Arguably, I got a with you, Portia the Batman movie. And the funny thing is, I was a little worried about Edward cuz that's how I look at him from Twilight playing <laughs> Batman. <laughs> I I was kind of I was like this non-expressive shining in the dark vampire is going to play Batman, but after seeing the trailers, he looks all right. Like he looks pretty solid as yeah. a Batman. And arguably, I do agree with the idea that, yeah, they keep on rebooting the Batman movies. Can they just stick with one or even branch off and just go to Nightwing or focus on Robin or somebody. But it does look interesting. I'm excited to see the other villains that we did not see in the Dark Knight trilogy. So I'm excited to see them bring those villains back to life and everything. And my number three, and I didn't expect it to, is that Suicide Squad video game that they're dropping. That did catch my eye. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect myself to become so, what I say, attached. Or I didn't expect expect myself to really love the Suicide Squad um franchise, but after getting into the movies and kind of liking the characters, I got a strong appreciation for Harley Quinn. So I really am excited to see that video game. It's one of the ones that actually stuck out to me. And if I had to make an honorable mention, Peacemaker looked like it might be funny as hell. Not going to lie. That's mm, it looked mm. like hey, no like. Not not like, oh, I expect myself to love it, but it does look like it could be funny as hell because Peacemaker was just stupid in the mo- in the Suicide Squad movie. I I feel like it's going to be the supporting characters that would make that show enjoyable. Because mm. me personally, watching the new Suicide Squad movie, John Cena's Peacemaker character, I would say he did good. He did better than what he did in Fast and the Furious, but... Oh, way better. If I had to choose, mm-hmm. 
any of the characters out of the Suicide Squad movie to focus on doing a solo movie on, John Cena would not have been the one I chose. Yeah, I respect that. I agree with you there. I do respect that. So, do you think they did it because of the Peacemaker IP specifically, or just because, oh, now we got a, a series splash movie focused on John Cena? I think they did it because it's just John Cena. I agree with that. Yeah. Honestly. I agree with that. So, but I want to, it's very interesting that you chose Flash as your number one. And Flash isn't even on my list, but it could be because I don't find Flash an interesting character. Mm-hmm. Um, out of all of the members of the Justice League, he's at the bottom of my list. I will agree with you that the effects from the teaser trailer did look good. Um, I think that maybe Ezra Miller is starting to become, to grow more into his role as the Flash and as Barry Allen's Flash. Because when I watched Justice League, I felt like he was a bit, a little bit too immature to be Barry Allen. I think yeah. he would have fit better being Wally West. And Wally West is the Flash that we got in the Justice League cartoon right. back in the day. Mm-hmm. That wasn't Barry Allen. That was Wally West. So he right. was giving me Wally West vibes instead of Barry Allen. But maybe this Flash movie, depending on where it is in the timeline, if it's coming off Justice League, he may be starting to become more mature in his role as Barry Allen. So that's my hesitation with that movie. So what about you, Jay? Uh, if I uh, hmm. the stuff I'm excited for, my top three is Static Shock, Static Shock, and uh, Static Shock. Um, did they show something for Static Shock? I ain't, unfortunately, I didn't show anything, but there is a Miles uh, Davis universe, which is basically all the um, most of the prolific black heroes within DC uh, under that my uh, well under that uh, that ownership or that uh, copyright. Uh, are, are they're making a animated Miles Davidson universe, and Static is getting his own show back, like he did um, when we were younger. So I'm at that's probably my number one, even though they didn't show much about it, but. Uh, the people working on the series are the same people who was working on his current comic. And if you guys have, if anybody hasn't like read that, uh, please do give it a, a try. It's really good. Um, and uh, the writing on his, the writing and the art director on it are really are uh, both make some really uh, impressive stuff. So I would highly recommend it. But um, Static was one of the heroes I very much identified with as a kid. So to see him get his own series back, and for even like uh, the other Miles Davis characters to get a central like animated series is about to be very interesting. So that's one of probably like my number one. If it wasn't for that, my number one probably would be the Batman movie because while at first I had some hesitancy um, when they announced Robert Pattinson playing Batman, uh, after I think the first teaser they showed, I was like, okay, they got the brutality down, but is the character there? Um, this trailer didn't really much answer that yet because yeah, he didn't do a lot of talking in this trailer. Yeah, we haven't we haven't seen Robert basically emote or act as Bruce or like in the suit. We've seen his movements, which seem very much on par with the character. But everything surrounding it, I'm actually very much interested in because uh, Riddler is an interesting villain, and the mm-hmm. fact that they're throwing him and to, from what it seems like to be Penguin. Um, makes it seem like they're doing a little bit more of the nitty gritty detective work, which I haven't really seen in the Batman movies. So that alone makes me feel, seem excited. Also, Zoe Kravitz probably is the best looking Catwoman. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would so. say, man, between her and Halle Berry, the only reason why I can't give Halle Berry's Catwoman movie its full props because it was a completely different story like her yeah. name wasn't even selena cow and i'm just looking like yeah no, I, I, what I, 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 I when i don't when i was when that originally came out i don't even think i was that big of a dc fan but i knew something was weird about it but uh i wasn't a big dc fan either but, but when i when i did yeah, get no. into it and when i did watch the movie again i was like She's not even Selena Cow. And then I was like, you're dating a police officer? The police? 
<laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what? When I looking yeah, back no. at it, uh, that, I mean, mo- movie aside, I think Holly Berry did a, a best job she could with what they gave her. But um, Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman look alone, I uh, um, to me is like what Selena gives off the mysterious yet. Uh, Basically, the whole mysterious vibes of a of like an international thief and like the yeah. cat and mouth. And even though we didn't get really get to see Robert talking at her, we got to see some of her like emotes and slash acting as Selena. And it seems like they have the relationship there, like they do in the comic books. So it's, that it's, makes me somewhat excited. Uh, I'm glad you it. touched on that because, and maybe we'll get more of it, but their cat and mouse. And they're like her mysterious international thief type bit reminds me kind of how Anne Hathaway went with it in mm-hmm. uh, The Dark Knight Rises. So yeah, it, she's uh, it's going more to the, like the comic side of Catwoman. Yeah, which I'm excited for. But like this feels much more. It, if anything, this feels more of a detective Batman story based off the trailers. I mean, like they showed the brutality in this, but like the fact that Riller is the main focus to me lets me feel like, okay, we actually get to see Bruce be a detective, the number one detective. Oh, he's going to have to be. If it's for yeah. Riddler, mm-hmm. he's going to have to be off real. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm ex- very much excited for that. If it wasn't for the whole, the, them announcing static, this prob- that probably would have been my number one as a Batman fan, as a super Batman fan. Um, my. Third is basically the same thing you said. It's uh, Gotham Knights. I can't wait to play that with my friends. And I can't wait to see how... Like, it looked fun from the moment they revealed it at the uh, previous E3. So I'm really excited to see what uh, they bring mm-hmm. to that. And if and also, if there's, like... Usually games like that have DLC. They add more characters. So if they add, start adding, like, for instance, the other Batgirls besides Barbara or, yeah. like, Damien later, or possibly even, like... Uh, Terry from uh you know Batman uh, Beyond, I think that that game can be really fun for a lot of uh for, well for a lot of people and I like to see the story elements in it because I hope they don't go lazy with those because a lot of games usually in that to- that play like this they kind of get lazy with the story development of it so I hope yeah. they don't lack on that but it does look fun and I'm very much so interested in playing it. so those are like probably my top three things from DC fandom from the previous uh, Batman watch. games I played when they did introduce uh, DLCs, um, they had a story with it, and the story was, they did pretty good with the stories. I can't remember which game it was where they had the Red Hood DLC, and he kind of had his own story. Oh, that was uh, the last one. That was Arkham Knight. That was Arkham Knight. Yeah, where they said Arkham Knight is a different character, and it just turned out to be Red Hood. (laughs) And it just turned out to be Jason Todd, and I was just like... Everybody had okay. guessed that from the trailer. Yeah, um, I'm kind of there- glad that you brought that up because I want to save that <laughs> when we get the Titan season three. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in my pocket. We gonna come back to that. We gonna come back to that when we talk yeah. about Titans. Yeah, but um, no, it's more of I, I I I trust the team that's making it. It's more, but it's more of like the the genre that that game falls in, which is like uh, co op multiplayer stuff. Usually mm-hmm. they focus solely on like the mechanics and the aspect, which is which isn't bad because technically you want good gameplay and good game mechanics from a game you're going to be playing with a lot of people. You know you don't want to do bad. I just hope that they give enough attention to the the story as well because these are story heavy. You know, like uh, comic books is our story heavy genre. So like I would yes. like to know, especially because the the the, tag, the opening of the uh, well, the trailer for Arkham Knights was Bruce is dead. Yeah. Deal with deal with and, golf clubs. And James Gordon. James yeah. Gordon and Batman are dead. Yeah, I was like, and then, and they basically left it to his kids to take care of the city that he, you know, was looking after. So it's like, how how will all that mix together is what I'm wondering. Like the story I'm very excited for, but also like the gameplay. Cause it um uh that gives me something else interesting to play with my friends who are also comic book fans. So I'm always looking forward to stuff like that. So yeah, but uh, we have a lot to look forward to. But those are probably my top three. Yeah, honorable mentions. We can we can go to because um, we kind of did a mix of like all of the different stuff that they show. My first honorable mention, Ryan already brought this up, was going to be Young Justice Phantoms. Mm-hmm. I love the Young Justice series. Season three, they did fall off, but I'm interested to see what they're going to bring in with season four. And I couldn't put it on my list because, like I already said, they had released two episodes the same day as DC Fandom. But it seems to be starting off slow 
for me, if anybody's already watched the first three episodes, it seems to be starting off a bit slow. I haven't seen the third one, but I did like what I saw in the first two. Like, I'm very interested I did. to see how this develops. Right. It caught my attention, but I guess I'm I'm Has trying ten- to see the I'm trying to see the point because the way mm-hmm. season three ended that hasn't really tied back in yet. It's it's coming through a little bit, but I'm waiting for them to tie in whatever this new problem is to what has been happening previously. Mm-hmm. My second honorable mention, and Ryan put this on his list, was the Suicide Kills the Justice League game. That looks really nice. And they have... I meant to research her name, and I forgot, but... You know, you guys know, because they did the same thing with Star Wars, how they uh, modeled one of the characters, like, after, like, one of, like, a real actor, like, the person that yeah. was playing them. Mm-hmm. They did the same Harley thing. Quinn looks like her actual actress. Margot Robbie? No, 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 no. I'm talking about the, the black lady. Oh, uh, Viola Davis's character. Yeah. Um, Amanda Waller, who, Waller, the lady Waller. who was playing Amanda Waller in this game, looks exactly like... Her voice actress if that's what they were going for because she looks exactly like and i can't think of her name so excuse me for that but okay other than that the game looks really good and the story the fact that they're going to be fighting against brainiac plus the justice league oh yeah so, and, uh, another thing is i'm interested because i thought this was odd this one is in the same universe as arkham knight even though the the Arkham Knights game isn't, which I thought was weird. So I wonder how that'll tie in. Hmm, I didn't know that. That yeah, was, they, that is interesting. I mean, unless they changed it, uh, it's made by the same. It's made by the same team. But in the uh, at E three, they announced that this is taking place after the events of uh, Arkham Knight. So Bruce is sure. no longer. If I'm if I remember Arkham Knight at the end of Arkham Knight, right? He's no longer Batman or something like that. I might be wrong though. So I'm interested to see how that. Uh, plays into everything. Mm. I guess that makes their uh, their mission a bit easier. And I, mm-hmm. it, this is the difficulty of killing the Justice League and then killing Batman took it down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it didn't take it down by much. But yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's really dope. I'm definitely excited for 2022 and all the movies that's about to drop. If I had to give another honorable mention, but it wasn't in my top three because I'm already pretty sure I'm going to enjoy it, it would be the Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom movie. But Aquaman did look good. I'm not but, happy that they still have Amber Heard in the movie, but eh, that's another could, topic for another day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's I I do expect like I don't have like high expectations, but not necessarily low either. I enjoyed the first one. Aquaman was never one of my favorite characters in terms of growing up watching like different animated series like Justice League and stuff, but I did enjoy the first movie, so I do expect to enjoy the second one. No, I think it's going to be really good, and then Mm -hmm. it looks like we're going to get more of Black Manta in this movie, Mm -hmm. and Black Manta is a really interesting character as well. Mm Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, for my honorable mentions, you mentioned one based on the Suicide Squad game. I'm very much interested to see how that all play out uh because it's the story looks to be interesting i mean you gotta kill the justice league how many members of the justice league <laughs> will, will, will yet to be remain but we know wonder woman from the trailer we know wonder woman green lantern and superman which is already kind of like we saw flash looks, too oh and flash and flash i don't know how they all right that'll be interesting but mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you got to basically kill God, so yeah. <laughs> good luck, I guess. Uh, but um, besides that, probably the other, other the other thing that I'm very interested in is uh, Black Adam. Uh, that the only thing really I know, good, too. The only thing I know about it is from the teaser they showed and that The Rock is playing him. But I'm wondering, like, because at first I thought they were going to do his origins and it does not seem like it now because his, his origins are like in ancient Egypt. But it seems like from this movie, they're doing it current day. And I'm wondering if Shazam or the Shazam family will make an appearance in this movie because it seems based off this teaser that it's just focused on him. So I'm wondering how that'll all play out. That's interesting because they did drop another um, Shazam trailer. 
which has mm-hmm. the Shazam family. So I don't know if those two movies are going to maybe something in the end credit scene that will tie them together. But that is that is pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. And it did yeah, look it's... good, but it did look dark. You know how you watch something and it's just dark the whole time? It's loud noises and it's dark and you can barely see anything. <laughs> That's what the trailer felt like to me. So I don't know if they just like threw together all the stuff you could barely see about the movie in the trailer. I so it it looked it sounded good, big booms. It did. The rock did look good as Black Adam, but I don't know if they're just I'm not sure if this trailer really caught my attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I don't know if I'm interested more about the trailer, but, but other than the everything in it that I could see looked good, but it's more of just like the implications that it's going to probably have, I guess, on like the Shazam movies. Because mm-hmm. I don't know if DC is still doing the connected universe thing. Cause that, that's a good I question too. I don't know how these movies are weaving together now. Right. So they, I can't really say how it's how it's gonna have effect on an overall DC universe, but it, yeah. at, at least for the Shazam movies, I think it'll be interesting. So I'm glad you brought up the the universe um, connection, continuity. But um, because they replaced Ben Affleck as Batman, and Robert Pattinson's Batman seems to be more Batman year um, one to start. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've really don't know how everybody's uh stories are gonna going to connect or if they or if they're just going to write off <coughs> Ben Affleck's Batman when they do Aquaman. And that's why I'm saying with like the time period that these movies are going to be happening in. Are they going to be after Justice League or are they going to be sometime before Justice League? Mm-hmm. Right. So that's that, a lot like, of questions. Yeah, that's something we have to wait for too. They also didn't mention anything about uh Wonder Woman. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, after eighty four, they might have to go back to the drawing board for her. I don't know. I would like yeah. to it was the, really although monster. although I don't although if they if they had came out and said, Oh, Wonder Woman's next movie is gonna be featuring one of the Wonder Girls, I'd been like, I'm sold because I just wanna see more of them <laughs> personally. Yeah, because we barely ever get to see them, so I would have been like, it might be bad, but also they got them in there. So, but I don't know. I, I agree with I, you. I don't know what they, I don't they showed. The, that's what, those are probably like all the things I'm like super into. I agree with you. They they need to go back to the drawing board. Wonder Woman eighty four was a nice movie if it was a chick flick, but if it was, but because it's supposed to be a superhero movie, it did not give superhero movie vibes. It gave me. It, Chick flick, but she's super strong and she has a lasso. And also, they kind of made what? whatever the whole status of the last movie, which they 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 set up Diana's character, kind of made mute or pointless. It was weird because oh, it was just like I miss my my husband, my man. <laughs> the whole that's movie. what I'm like saying. And then the whole they cheated us out of the the cheetah fight too, like cheetah's whole thing, like. Wonder Woman versus Cheetah is the fight, and it did not give me what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. I was actually going to say, was it was Wonder Woman eighty four more disappointing because of the bar that they set with the original Wonder Woman movie? Because everybody loved the original Wonder Woman movie, and then eighty four just came in and was like on everybody's expectation. It was. I, I would say the thing that made it bad was more so just like how it took the character that established in the last movie and kind of made it like a cl- her a cliff note of it. Kind of like a Game of Thrones, how like the like last how season Daenerys made Like how Daenerys went for I, I need my man. Like, F everything I just did in this last movie. I I need my man. So I want my man back. And then the villain wasn't compelling at all. Mm-hmm. Nah. They had a chance to make him interesting when his son asked for a wish, but they yeah. they, 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 uh, they cowered out. <laughs> they they backed down hard. They cowered so. out with a lot of stuff in that mm-hmm. movie. So let's go ahead and move on. So let's talk about the animated Injustice movie by DC. So it officially released on Tuesday, October 19th. The reason I said officially is because 
the Injustice movie got leaked like two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So, um, I watched the leaked movie. I can't even find the official release. Like, they didn't even put it on HBO Max. Like, this is where all the DC stuff is going, and you didn't put the movie on HBO Max. Shout out to shout out to McMillian for getting us the link. Huh? What? Who? Right. But <laughs> Our local pirate. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what y'all talking about. No, we don't. I didn't get that. I didn't get that from him. <laughs> but what I want to know is you guys' overall rating for the movie, and I guess your overall experience with the movie. We've talked about this before, and mm-hmm. I have toned down, so <laughs> I will be civil. <laughs> I will be civilized. <laughs> I will be civilized for this review, but to start with me, I have to give Injustice a four. Um, It should have kicked off a series of movies. That's if I'm going high level, because I have a lot of complaints, but high level, it shouldn't have been a solo dolo film. The way they ended it made it seem like it was going to be solo dolo, but it should have ended to where more um things from injustice could have played into the animated version of it because the injustice comic takes place over a five year span so you really can't shove five years into one movie and they didn't and i have a problem with that and if they didn't want to make it a series of movies they should have just made it an animated series that you have that's so much material, not even counting Injustice 2 if they wanted to go that route. But mm-hmm. that's, if they wanted to do a year, a season for each year, that's five seasons off the bat. And you can't say that you're not going to make money off of it because the Injustice, the Injustice story is one of my favorite stories from DC. And it's I'm pretty a sure. It's pretty big event it's, in general. That too, it affects the whole DC universe. So, with people watching Young Justice, um, of course, if you put out Injustice, which is basically a a Justice League alternate universe Justice League type series again, of course you're gonna get people to watch it because Young Justice they're getting older now. But when Young Justice first started, they were focusing on the younger heroes. So this just would have been a dive back into the older heroes that we got in the Justice League back in the early 2000s. My other issue that I had with the movie is that they ripped a lot out of the comic books that were vital to the story. And I know why they did it, because they were trying to make it one movie. And if they had put some of those pieces in there, it would not have allowed the Injustice movie to be one movie. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you ripped out vital pieces of the story. And I have not seen a DC movie yet that has done that. They might have changed some things, tweaked some things, but they always kept the meat of the story. They always kept the heart of the story. That even if you were to go back and read the graphic novel that the movie is based off of, you're not that upset about the stuff that they change because it's like a small tweak here and there um but i did like the beginning if you want to (laughs) know if you want to know what i did like i did like the beginning um the way they they did go straight comic book with the beginning but the the beginning is what grabs you the joker got superman and it makes it reminds you how easy of a mark superman is but I do like the fact that Joker mentioned that, like, oh, this was easy. Like going against you, Brucey, ah, uh, that's kind of tough. Let me go for an easy mark to start over. Let me make myself feel better. And it's like, oh, but, this is the easy mark, Superman. But the thing is that I enjoy is that look what he did, and he called it an easy mark. And then look at the stuff that he sets up for Batman, and the stuff that he sets up for Batman is no way on the scale of what just went down at the beginning of this movie. Like, he murders a couple people, like, in Batman sense, 
the Joker murders, he does murder people. But he mm-hmm. just wiped out a whole city. Gotham City is still standing with a man with no superpowers fighting a clown. <laughs> and you have the Kryptonian. Whole city got wiped out. So but I, I, but I think that's the I think that's kind of what he was saying. Like the, to go against Superman, I you don't need to do you don't need like all the genius into like because for Batman. I mean, he's trying to wipe out wipe out Gotham a whole bunch of times, but and the way he does is like you gotta go here, 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 stop right. this. X, you gotta like X X Y Z things. And for Superman, it was kind of like all right, we're just gonna put a we're bomb just gonna here. Do one experiment, <laughs> right, right. Make him kill his boo. He fan. was chilling, like he was chilling. Yeah, we're just gonna put this stuff around here. It's fine. Harley's like, are you sure we don't need to, you know, have a backup plan? No, no, no. We're fine. We're fine. It's, it's just Superman, the Man of Steel. It's just him. You know. It's just Superman. It's just the Kryptonian. We're fine. But um, that was my rating. So what about you guys? All right. Uh, let me let me go next, Jay, because okay. to the to to the audience, call me a lowly casual if you want to. You can. Being friends with Portia and Jay has definitely expounded my intrigue into comics and um, superheroes specifically. I had to go back and watch a lot of the DC animated movies and watch them in order thanks to HBO Max. And I enjoyed them. I didn't grow up on the com- comic books. I watched Justice. I watched the Justice League cartoons. I watched Superman vs. Batman and all those other shows. But I have to say, I enjoyed the Injustice movie. It was, really, it was a really fun watch. It was, really fun, it was a really fun watch. <laughs> I would arguably have to give it like a six and a half out of ten. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Seeing Superman go dark, it was fun. Seeing that dynamic, seeing him and Bruce arguing and shit. It was an entertaining watch. Wonder Woman trying to come in and be like, oh, now that your girl dead, let me come in and make my mark. And then figuring out like, ah, I don't like him no more. It, It was a fun watch. Oh, the only way to beat Superman is with another Superman at the ending. I was like, you know what? They didn't beat him though. He did it, but it made sense. I was like, how do you beat him? I, I, as a lowly casual that I am, I will admit, <laughs> I enjoyed it. But I have to be fair. Um, some, of the, some of the audience, of course, didn't get these conversations when we did talk about it. But taking into consideration how the video games win and taking into consideration that Porsche made a really strong fact that the timeline is over the course of, what, five years exactly, Porsche? Mm-hmm. They did... I I did notice that that movie definitely could have expanded into probably three to five movies or even turn into a TV series. And to it would be have honest, to been long because uh, yeah. And Justice the Justice comic book is what happens before the video game, mm-hmm. and then yeah. you had and then there's an, a comic that happens before Injustice Two as well. So yep, it definitely would have had to been long. So. See, and to be honest, because I enjoy, like, as a lowly casual, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not going to, y'all can murder me he if y'all want to. He keeps saying that to justify the fact that he likes this movie, but I'm going to let him have like, it. I, I got to defend myself. I got I got to put, put up a shield real quick. But even hearing that ex- explanation of, hey, they should have expanded this, that would have made me appreciate it even more. Because from my mindset, I did pretty much enjoy this movie. I'll give it a six and a half out of ten. I'm not going to give it a seven as above average but in terms of like high average and i've seen other um dc movie animated movies and i thoroughly enjoyed those but knowing that i guess the reason i'm giving a six and a half now is also because i've heard jay's and Porsche's opinions prior seeing that they did derail some stuff and took some stuff out having watched other series and animes where they've done that and seeing what the casual audience missed out on i can't i can understand that but i'll have to say a six and a half out of ten Okay. Porsche, Porsche I ain't got nothing to say to you. I don't have nothing to say to you. Okay, so I ain't got I nothing guess, to say to you. I guess I'll be the great equalizer here. I have two different opinions of this movie. Mm-hmm. From a casual viewing perspective, I think this is probably a a, a six. Um, it gives you people to care about. It gives you a uh, storyline that's easy to follow, and it give and it's not and, and and to me it never felt convoluted or contrived. It followed a decent structure, and it, that originally was my original rating for it, even as someone who did read the Angels comic. Let's go, Jay. But 
But hold on. But however, if you go over and take out a <laughs> channel called Growing Otaku Council, I made there is an episode one. Their uh, reviews Demon Slayer's episode where they somewhat did something similar to this, and I laid into that. So I would not be doing justice if I didn't do the same for this movie. So with that in mind, I kind of have to agree with Fop on this that the true rating probably should be lower around maybe a four and a half. I'm not going to say hard four because I do think this is still a good movie. But to the people that have not read this comic, you were robbed in experience. And that's not good. Um, there's a lot more to, to even but beside outside Batman and Superman, because that's truly kind of what Injustice somewhat focused on at its core. The comic spreads out and like makes I mean, the movie tried to do it, but like Oliver Queen's a very important character. Mm-hmm. How does Harley deal with the death of Joker is also super big. Um, and, mm-hmm. and this one is kind of just reduced down to jokes. Uh, you have. How Bruce and Damien's relationship was fractured after the events of uh, this movie. I'm not going to touch in, into it too much because I don't know if we're doing spoilers, but uh, a, a lot, a lot happened, and it did not affect just the big two or big three, uh, yep. being Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman. It it branched out and touched everybody within the Justice League. It fractured the Green Lantern Corps. Other cores had to get involved. Uh, people from different worlds and galaxies. It was a whole mess. The Pantheon got involved, and y'all. And this movie doesn't even touch on half the Greek of that. gods got involved. Yeah, so it's like if if I go with it with that, and if I can't and if I can't let an anime get off easy, I can't. I definitely can't let DC comics get off easy. So I gotta. I probably say yeah, I won't go as hard as a four because I still think this is a good movie. But it's definitely a four and a half because knowing what was robbed from you, because this should have been a series, honestly. I don't think it, after mm-hmm. reconsidering this, it, it should have been a series. I don't think it should have been a series of movies. I think it should have been an animated series. Year one should have been a season. Year two should have been a season. Year three should have been a season. Year five should have been a season. Um, yep. The game, what happened in the games necessarily doesn't need to be recovered. But if they did, those could have been movies because those actually have like a start here, end here type of story. But the the coverage of Injustice One comic from years one through five should have been a series, and the same thing for Injustice Two comic years one. Th- I don't I don't remember how many years Injustice Two had or if it had. Years. I stopped reading Injustice um, after a while. I'm not sure how long it lasts. But those should have been seasons. This should not have been a movie because um, I actually think it's really hard to have figured out what they would take out and what they would leave in. But I think, but to go back to it, if you're a casual person, you and you've never read any of the comics and you just came here for a good time, Ryan's rating, I think, is fair. I think it's a six or a six and a half. You got it. If you are a person that came here looking for comic accurate stuff or like even, even, it doesn't even have to be comic accurate, but like maybe the weight that Injustice had in the comic, you're not going to get that. And unfortunately, that's why I have to give it like a four and a half because... It's an enjoyable movie. I did not dislike watching it as a viewer, but if I were to, let's say I just read the Injustice comic before watching this, I would be highly upset. Yeah. So. I guess that's my thing. And I can't, I can't separate it. I can't separate the casual watcher <laughs> from the person who's read the comics. I can't. I'm sorry. So. <laughs> It's going back to McMillian's point. It's like, I know what you guys have been robbed from. And if you're not going to be upset about it, it's fine. I'll be upset for you. (laughs) But, I mean, I don't know. I'm not upset at Ryan for for enjoying the movie. Oh, you're not? (laughs) (laughs) No. I I told you I toned. (laughs) I told you I toned down. I did. I I tone down. I'm not upset for you for liking the movie because I mean that's your opinion, you know. It's a lot of movies that we think are like the bee's knees, and then some people are like, "Oh my god, why do you like that?" Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's the same thing. I guess I'm just coming from the point that, like I said, this is one of my favorite stories from DC. So I'm, I was, I had high expectations when they said they were doing an animated movie, and I just had my expectations crushed. So, yeah, I am going to rage 
<laughs> about this. But um, before we move on, for those watching on YouTube or even those listening, um, put in the comments what your opinion about the movie was. What's your rating? Do you agree with me, the hardcore comic or the mm-hmm. casual watcher, Ryan? Or are you neutral like Jay? So let us know. And if you're listening, you can DM us on uh, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you're following us and let us know what's up. So moving on to the last thing is Titans season three. So for those who are new to Titans or um, have watched it, I don't know when this season started. When did the season start? Uh, give me one second. When is this? I want to say, was it like July or August? Have to, uh, have to throw into the August. August. I never watched Titans, but I Thank do you. love the Teen Titans animated series. So this might be interest. This this might be interesting for you to hear. This might actually make you watch it. Mm. Might. Might. I have a I, very mixed opinion on Titans. I have, I have a mixed opinion too, but I'm going to get into it. I have a very mixed opinion on Titans, but I would say that my mixed opinion has not stopped me from watching the show. So, starting off with my rating, uh, I'm giving Titans Season 3 a 6. Um, to talk about the, the problem in general, and before we get into it, there may be some minor spoilers, so if you have not seen titans or if you haven't seen the last episode um just spoiler warning because i want to get into this i do so the problem at hand the issues that i have with it why i can't rate it higher is um the jason todd scarecrow connection and i'm gonna go ahead and reach in my pocket and pull out that thing that mcmillian mentioned earlier because when you mention arkham knight being Red Hood and Scarecrow, my mind immediately went to Titans because this is exactly what it was. But I felt like this Jason Todd that they introduced was too young to execute that story. And the way that they changed the story to make it fit his age, I don't think I really liked it because, like, when he died, Batman just goes and straight out and kills the Joker. And that kind of removed Red Hood's sole purpose. Because when Jason Todd got resurrected from being killed by Joker, his vengeance, his purpose came from the fact that after he died, Batman still let Joker live. So that's where he goes on his whole vengeance uh, vengeance tour of, I can be a better Batman and I can protect Gotham better than you. So, I don't like how they switched that up. I'm still not a big fan of Ian Ian Glenn as Batman. For those who don't know who that is, Jorah Mormont from Game of Thrones is Batman in the series. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't giving me Batman when we met him back in season two, and it's still not giving me Batman now. I don't think he Mm. fits the image of Batman. Was the first time um, we met him season two? I thought it was one, I, right? Draw a Mormont? Mm, I, like I think we met him season, season two. One. Maybe it might okay. have been the end of season one, but I know we definitely saw him. No, so, so, yeah, in no, season he was two. in season two. It was definitely season two. I know that. So maybe we did see him at the se- in the season one. I don't remember. But also, Scarecrow wasn't a compelling villain to me. So he was he was weird. To me, like the, mm-hmm. no, the actor, the actor that was playing him, it wasn't giving me Jonathan Crane. And when we see Scarecrow, we don't see Scarecrow with his mask off a lot. When we do see him with his mask off, he's locked up. But I was thinking that once he got out, he was going to throw that mask back on and it was just about to be terror time. But his whole thing with his mommy issues and him trying to be like this evil mentor, um, like the opposite of what Batman was trying to be for Jason Todd. It was 
it was weird. I didn't like that dynamic. And then it didn't, he didn't seem like a big enough problem for me for the whole Teen Titans to stop. That's my thing. It's different with Trigon and Destro because Trigon is a original Teen Titans character. He's connected to one of the Titans. So, of course, mm-hmm. he's going to have some ground. Season two is Destro. Destro also has some relation to the Titans that made him, you know, this hardcore Titans enemy. Scarecrow, one, is not a Teen Titans villain to begin with, and he has no connection. So even talking about villains, other villains that they didn't have put in the season yet, Terra, um, big villain, strong connection to the Titans. All of their villains have some type of connection, and I wasn't seeing the connection between Scarecrow and the Titans. Mm-hmm. Um, other things that I didn't like is another interesting twist that they did on one of the storylines and that is the um the origin of starfire and blackfire so in the original i'm gonna do what they did in the titans and i'm gonna talk about what they did in the com what is in the comics Mm -hmm. what they did is that blackfire apparently blackfire is the younger sister so they switched that blackfire is the younger sister and Mm -hmm. she had this whole beef with Starfire, same beef as the comics that they treated her as lesser and they treated Starfire as like the queen, like the favorable sister or whatever. But you find out like two episodes, second to last episode that Blackfire, Starfire was born without powers. She was the cripple, but they really wanted Starfire to be queen. So when Blackfire was born with the power of fire, they had some witch doctor take the firepower out of Blackfire and put it in Starfire. And I was kind of like, why? And now Starfire has this weird type other power. And I'm just like, I'm not getting where this is going to fall in with her story. Because in the comic books, Blackfire is the older sister. We know this from the comics. And even if you haven't read the comics, you know this from the Teen Titans animated series. Mm-hmm. Blackfire is the older sister. Blackfire was born crippled. And because she was born crippled, she could not have rights to the throne. Mm -hmm. So when Starfire was born, she was born with the power of fire. And she got rights to the throne. And that's that's their beef. So they flipped it in Titans. And I'm not really sure why they flipped it. So I can't really give them props for that. Unless when season four, because they have confirmed season four. If season four comes around and they give Starfire's new uh, powers some kind of purpose or maybe look more into Blackfire's character and her trying to deal with it, maybe. But I don't know. Starfire is one of my favorite characters in the DC Universe, and I just feel like the switch was unnecessary. But the things that I did like, Super mega giant spoiler, Donna Troy is back. She is not dead. Because that pissed me off at the end of season two. Like, the way that she died, I felt was weak. No. Weak no. sauce. <laughs> and dumb. Oh. It was <laughs> so weak. And I was like, oh my god. And the thing that made me mad is because I like Donna Troy. And we don't see a lot of Donna Troy in the DC universe. So for Donna Troy to be in Titans had me hooked anyway. But then we get to season two and they kill her off. And I was like, why? But she's back. Um, So I was like, yay, she's back. Took her a minute to actually get back, but sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Barbara Gordon, the actress that played Barbara Gordon was pretty interesting. Um, They changed her up a little bit too. Um, to where Oracle is now this big robot thing, and she's not Oracle. I have something to say about that, but I'll wait for my Yeah, <laughs> But I thought her character was nice. I think she played a nice Barbara Gordon. Um, 
I guess going off the versions of Barbara Gorda that we've seen where she takes over the GCPD in her father's place, I think she did a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. Um, The other thing that I like, Raven. So when Titans first started, I did not like Raven. I did not like the way they were doing her powers. I did not like how they were integrating Trigon into her story. Season two, it started to get better. But this season, I think that this season is that she's coming into her form. And I love it. The way they've, they're they doing her powers, the effects with her powers now look great. Um, and, the, and the swagger that she has is, is giving me, it is giving me Raven. So yeah, I did appreciate he's... that growth in that character. And the other thing is that um, Anna Dio, the actress that plays Starfire, she's great all the time. And it's like she gives me a different side of Starfire where she's still blunt at Starfire because you know how Starfire says things, but she really doesn't know, like, you what know, calm mean. down. Right. She's still giving me that that ignorant bluntness that Starfire has, but at the same time, she feels more human so that's what i like about this starfire that she feels more human because in the animated series she is it's more of her acclimating and it's more like alien like me touching down and me standing out as the alien but this if starfire, i could, uh, if I could comment on that if, if i could comment on it i feel like uh the way they're the route they're taking her live action uh counterpart is it feels more Wonder Woman ish, where like I come from a different world, so my customs are odd, but I'm still like it doesn't feel as like I'm a I'm a dunce. I don't understand things. It's more of just like oh, these are my customs. I'm not used to Earth ones, so you're gonna get all this bluntness. As I think it's to coming from. Ditzy. I think it's just coming from a older because in the comics when Starfire does. When she has been staying on Earth for years, she does turn into this type of character that is already settled in mm. American culture. Okay. Because she's um like she's a model. And we kind of sort of got that like in season one when we first got introduced to Starfire. Like we get the she was a model, she was doing other stuff, she was dating Dick Grayson and all this other stuff. So I feel like that's where they were going. With okay, so with her from character. the older, okay, right. yeah, because I don't know much about the origin Teen Titan. Like I know more of like the newer comics of. Mm-hmm. Okay, but um, and then my last question mark is where are they going with Tim Drake? So I feel yeah, like we're just so recycling. I just feel like we're recycling Robins at this point. I have but, questions about that too. He's a, he's a um, question mark for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh hmm. All right. Uh, wait, are you were you done with your I guess? Yeah, that was that was all my things. Okay. Uh since Ryan hasn't watched it, I guess I'll go. Uh Turning Season 3. If you, so if you don't know much about me, let me just introduce you to some. I'm a huge Batman, Batman family fan. Uh I have so many I uh, have mixed feelings about this season because I love Under the Red Hood is probably one of my favorite DC storylines. And this season felt like it was trying to do it in their own special way. But if I, I, everyone knows the saying, if you don't, if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> it was not broken. And they played with it too much in my personal opinion. Like he came back within a week. Yeah, Bruce's whole thing was like you said he killed the Joker and then he left and I was like this kind of seems like it to me it actually would have been interesting to see what it would have been like if Bruce stayed in Gotham after he killed the Joker because I feel like there would have been more a more compelling story to see Dick and Bruce uh, try and rehabilitate Jason than it just be Dick Grayson and the Teen Titans but, right and that's how it was well Minus the Titans, but that's how it was in the movie. Bruce and Nightwing were both dealing with the <clears throat> fact that Jason was back. Or they were dealing with the Red Hood. But I, I would have liked to see... 
I would like to see like the dynamic would have been like how different it would have been since Bruce in this world at least killed the Joker because in the movie he didn't and they they were fine and in this one you can tell that well actually he didn't really get a chance to react to it it was kind of just like I'm gonna wake you up in the middle of the night I'm gone Wayne Man is yours peace and I was like I what <laughs> yeah. I was just as confused as he was so, so this season I don't know if I. I don't know if I'd give it a six because in my mind, they, they did a lot of things. I didn't like the Donna Troy coming back. I thought it was dope because they did her dirty. I don't know how an Amazon bitch is basically like a mini god dies to a lamp pole, but they brought her back. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I had so much problems with that. I, I cannot. <laughs> but but uh, overall, I Titans is interesting because it's like, we want to they want to tell like a more dark gritty story of like mm-hmm. the top the teen titans in general but sometimes i feel like they go too far to where it's cheesy because the whole thing with the scarecrow i'm gonna take you under my wing and be your reverse batman father i was like this feels dumb i feel it, like i didn't it, like it because scarecrow to me has never needed sidekicks and i don't think he would need one now i i just feel like he probably would use him to get out of jail and then almost immediately kill him afterwards in my personal opinion but yeah. like the episode he when he went to visit his mom, I was like, "This is stupid. I didn't need this. I I, none, I needed none of this." I I don't know if was, they were trying to make us feel for him or give him some type of death, but I do agree that whole scene was definitely unnecessary, I and mean, it didn't make me fear for yeah, them John, more. Jonathan Crane's whole thing is like he's. He's psychotic, but he's also a genius. So I just felt like they didn't really illustrate that enough to me. I felt I felt like I got more of the psychotic person, but you could kind of took the genius away when you were like, "I'm going to take Batman's protege and raise him as my own." Knowing how say, strong, knowing how strong Batman's moral compass is, I don't know why you would think that would work. But hey, I was going to say at first when Dick Grayson finds out that the GCPD has been using Scarecrow to solve crimes. I was like, okay, now they're touching him more of his intelligent side. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. Like immediately after he broke them out, we lost the intelligence of Jonathan Crane. And it was just like him more on a psychotic spree. Yep. And also, uh, what is it? The, I didn't, not that I didn't like Barbara. I will actually say I really liked Barbara's portrayal. What I did not like is that, uh, the way they did Oracle, because to me that doesn't it didn't illustrate the making it an AI and not her manning a supercomputer and showing her skills, her her intellectual skills, kind of took away from her character. I just feel like yeah to to make it just an AI that all it does is take voice commands. I was like, this is maybe it's because of how little impact it had on this season. Or the way but, they were, or the way that they used it in the season, because you remember they had that part where Scarecrow did hack into Oracle. Yeah, no, I mean that's what I was like. Maybe it's that the way that, that, that how impactful they wanted to make it. I just felt like that took away from Barbara's character uh, a, a bit. I would agree. So uh, I, I'm not sure if I necessarily liked what they did with the Bat family this season. It felt very off in ways. Like they felt like they were trying to. I don't know. I felt like they were trying to fit the Titans into a bat, a, a purely like bat family story, and I, I, I don't think they should have went that route. In my mind, I feel like if they were going to do the Red Hood story and they were going to make it like that, De- Jason's death should have lasted the end of the till the end of the season, and probably got teased that he came back as Red Hood by the end of the season. It should be, it should have been a different storyline. I feel like altogether. I'm not sure what they could have done, but I feel like maybe Dick dealing with Tim Drake that would have been an interesting thing if they made mm-hmm. it just that. And him having to deal with the loss of a brother and him having to coil, cope with the fact that, that he might need to replace him. Like, because Gotham needs a Robin. Because that was the whole reason that Tim, uh, when Tim got added in the comic books, it was like, I, Batman needs a psychic. Like, you can't, you can't have one without the other or you kind of, because he starts to lose himself. So it would have been interesting to see if they kind of focused on that more. But we got very little of that, I feel like, this season. But mm-hmm. overall, I thought the story that they told was interesting. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't uninteresting to watch. It was just the, the parts I had with it mostly could probably come from the fact that like I'm a huge Batman, fan. like. But the I stuff around it, like, like what you said, Raven's character feels a lot better this season to me than she's felt in prior. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I really enjoyed her at the end of season one, but like getting to the end of season one 
probably because of her character was kind of a drag. I also felt yeah. like the season one was really trying to find its footing. So I, you know, season two I really enjoyed all the way up until the down to Troy situation. I was like, this. Yeah. Is- <laughs> I'm always bring it back to that because that they yeah. did her dirty. They I'm really did. It. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one who's upset about that because I was you, just like, because to me, to me, I, I understand uh, DC does a lot with the Bat family, and which I like because I'm a huge fan of them. But I also, I, I, I really enjoy the sidekick storylines because the thing is, you always see the main team, and very rarely do you get to see how the 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 younger or the next generation of those characters act. And for Wonder Woman. It's, I always feel like they never find the right balance to strike with her sidekicks. So yeah. when I actually get a chance to spend time with them, I appreciate it because I'm just like, these are interesting characters that we barely get to see, just like with Superboy and stuff like that. Like, I, um, one of my favorite characters on Titans is Superboy. And it's just like, I like to see him develop because in season two, they did a really interesting thing with him. It was like, happy go lucky almost. I'm going to save people. And then he ended up fighting the police. And I was like, this is great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, but. so to, to see him develop. So I was kind of glad that she's back now. And I can't wait to see how they move forward with season four. But this season, I don't know. I felt parts of it were good. And there are parts of it I would probably do without. Like, it's very, I'm very middle of the road. So I probably have to give this one a five because I don't necessarily think it was bad, but I also don't necessarily, I can't give it, I can't push it over the, the average line because I feel like if you, with all the stuff, Scarecrow and the whole Jason thing, I just feel like that takes a lot away from it. Cause it, that wasn't, I, I felt like the way they balanced it wasn't right. Like, I don't think they I found the right way to balance that enough for me. I, I would agree. And I wanted to couple on, touch on a couple things that you brought up. Like when you said they were trying to make this Bat Family story a Titan story. And I definitely agree with that. And I would have sufficed. I like your idea if if they would have left Jason dead the whole season and teased Red Hood at the end. But I also could have went for them fighting Red Hood this whole time and then finding out at the end of the season that it's been Jason. I could have went for that too. Because mm-hmm. I feel okay. like they did their reveal, his reveal that he was Jason too early. So then oh, it's like, yeah, okay, that... now what? So it and I don't know looking if that was at because uh, I don't. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I don't know if that was if they decided to make it so soon because the fans knew or something. Because I know a lot of times TV writers that what they like to do is they they like to drag you in with mystery stuff you don't know. So it's like Jason Tybee and Red Hood. That's a that's well known by now. Like if if, I, if you don't know that, I I you'd have to be like a child almost. But but I I felt like that you could have still told that story in a compelling way, even with uh, even with us knowing because Red Hood himself is still an interesting character. He's a compelling. That's like what I was fa- gonna say. Like in fa- like for instance, in Young Justice in the last season, they hinted that of uh, Damien existing and Jason being back, yep. uh, at at the when they visited uh, uh Raish. and yep. so sorry if I spoiled that I that it, 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 but it's been like almost like a year since three appeared. Yeah, so. you gonna have to let that go. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are gonna have to let that go. But uh, I, like I that I was like that's still, but to me because like oh that's still interesting. I, knowing he exists is enough for me to be like I can't wait to see how they use him, or I can't wait to see how they decide to make him effective. Because that w- alone would have been interesting. Like the whole one of my favorite one of my favorite episodes is actually seen was when had the whole dynamic of Hawk and Dove, how he mm-hmm. made him act to that. I was like, if they decided to have that just be this season, and the way they figured out, I guess fighting Jason or throwing him off his game would be to add Tim as the new Robin. I would have been like, this is a really nice story, but they didn't yeah. go that route. So I was gonna say I. Maybe they did reveal him early because, like you said, Red Hood is a known story. He's a known character. We know who he is. But I don't feel like that's a good enough reason for revealing him that early because that was the whole thing in Arkham Knight and that was the whole thing of Under the Red Hood, that they spent majority of the story fighting Red Hood and trying to figure out who he is. And when it really boiled down to this is Jason, it was like, Oh, like you did all this stuff. We spent like an hour and something trying to figure this out. So they revealed they killed him off too early. 
They brought him back too early. And then the way they were trying to salvage the rest of the story, I would have to agree with you. It did not, it did not ride with me. And I mm-hmm. think they should have left it. I think they should have left it a Bat Family story. And I guess this would be one of my other issues. And I may just have to drop this from a six to a five that the Teen Titans have so many other villains. And for you guys to take a Batman villain and to take this Bat Family story and to try to make it a Titan story, I feel like you guys had so much more source material to work with. I mean, pers- personally, while season two, I really enjoyed it. I really feel like they waste, they killed off Deathstroke too fast, and they wasted Ravager much too. Early. Same. They wasted because Jericho the, too. Yes, because in the comics, Ravager is a very interesting character because the way she gets introduced is that they, uh, Dick is trying to infiltrate. I think uh, Deathstroke's, um, I guess his like mini army. I think because at this time he was leading like a mini like mercenary group or some shit like that, mm-hmm. and he was training Ravager to kill Superman. And I was like, "This is amazing! <laughs> this is a, a amazing plot line." Because uh, the reason she actually ends up losing her eye, I don't know how it happened. I forget how it happened in Titans, but she her Deathstroke ends up cutting it out and replacing it with Kryptonite so she can kill Superman. And I'm like, if they had even alluded to that a bit in this series, I would have been like, this is dope. I think but he did kinda... cut her eye in season two, and that's why she ran away or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So she, but it wasn't, but I'm saying, like, to me, it, it was supposed to get her in with the Titans. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I just feel like those two characters have such a heavy weight on the Titan team itself that they kind of just went. I feel but like they, they did even... too much with them early, so. That, I would agree with you with season two, but season three, what I was saying about so many other villains, they could have did Brother Blood. Brother Blood's mm-hmm. whole thing. Um, Terra. I I feel like they tried to do Ravenger and Deathstroke how they did Terra and Deathstroke. And it didn't... Sure. It didn't gel as well? Yeah, it didn't gel the way that Deathstroke and Terra did but they could even brought Terra into the mix because and that would have caused like a whole thing between her beast boy and raven um who else if they brought in the high five jinx like they they busted gizmo in episode one but they have a whole thing gizmo Mm -hmm. jinx um i'm trying to think of more more villains i think they should have saved Trigon too, because hit Trigon's whole thing, Trigon and Raven's whole thing affected the whole DC universe. It did, mm-hmm. in the comic books, it did. Um, and I'm trying to think of the the other villains that they had, and I can't think think of many. Um, but what I'm just trying to get at is that they had other villains that play into the Titan stories that they could have played on, and I don't think they should have stolen from a Batman story and tried to make it Titans. Yeah. Basically. So, and I also wanted to um, touch on the thing that you said about the sidekicks. And this is why I like Titans, because it is focused on the sidekicks. And I like that you brought up Donna Troy as a sidekick, because even in Young Justice, when Young Justice first started, it was a sidekick show but we still had no Wonder Woman sidekick representation. We got some... We got some in season part. two. Yeah, Cass- and they, they barely tested her. Right? right, Cassandra Kane as Wonder Girl showed up in season two. Still didn't give my girl Donna Troy no love, but we got a Wonder Girl. We did get one. But when it first started, we get Batman sidekick, Flash's sidekick. We even got Aqualad. And Aqualad... It's not really even a popular. He's popular now, but he wasn't really a popular sidekick hero. Mm -hmm. We got Zatanna. We got um, Artemis, Red Arrow. We got, um, and Miss Martian. They gave Martian Manhunter a little Martian Manhunter, but we couldn't get Wonder Woman sidekick. Mm -hmm. So I'm, and that's the other thing that compelled me to the show is because now we're finding a place for Wonder Woman's sidekick. Now we're fitting her in into the stories. 
sure enough, they did kill her off at season two, but I'm glad they brought her back and I hope they choose to keep her going forward yeah. and keep integrating her into the story because what they did in the comics and what they're doing in the show is what I really like is that her and Dick Grayson are really close. They were really close in the comics. They were, they had a brother sister type relationship and that relationship is displayed in the Titan show as well. Mm -hmm. So I really like that. And I really like how they're going about her character. So. Yeah. That was pretty much my thing. I know we just spoiled like the whole season three, <laughs> Ryan, but, but, but would you watch it? But would you watch Titans? I mean, by the way that y'all talk about it, honestly, I'm content with just my experience of watching Teen Titans <clears> and the <throat> Titans animated movies like Judas Contract and all of them. Because if you remember when you first introduced me to the DC animated movies and where I could watch them all, I was like, oh, they did Titans? And this is all mature and really fun. It almost like nothing about the live action really entices me, even based off of you guys' discussion. I don't feel a reason to go and watch it. It does it doesn't sound as interesting to know that some of the characters like when while you was talking, I didn't want to speak because I didn't want to interrupt you guys' flow. But I was like, you know what? I did love Tara. I love Brother Blood too. They're not there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, eh, risk being disappointed versus just enjoying what I already have. I think I'm gonna stick with what I already have. They have their good moments, but I can I feel where you're coming from. I think the other thing that would that almost made me not watch it, and I'm still not sure why they did this. They left off Cyborg. I don't understand oh, yeah. why Cyborg is in the Doom Patrol show and not in Titans. So, you know, I I think it's funny. I never questioned it because he fits so well in Doom Patrol. Like I actually enjoy him in Doom they Patrol. Made, they made they made him right. fit. I'm not mad about. I am upset, but when I watched because him in Doom Patrol, he he does fit with the dynamic that they were going for. But his origin is Titans. Titans. And what's funny, what's so interesting, is that Beast Boy's origin is Doom Patrol. He later went to the Titans. So but they so showed odd. that. But they yeah, showed they that show in season one, when they first went to go get Beast Boy, they went to the Doom Patrol house. So his connection with the Doom Patrol was there. Was strong. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I, I, I never considered just based on how it looked, but you're right. Yeah, it's kind of odd. So I don't know. And it could just be a budget thing. It could be that they don't want to play with too many storylines because had they put Cyborg in it, that's a whole different dynamic and storyline they have to deal with. They have to deal with Victor Stone being a half man, half cyborg and him trying to fit in with this group and him trying to um, accept himself as he is, which he's struggling with in Doom Patrol. But Doom Patrol, it's what, four of them, four or five of them. Yeah. Where Titans, okay. they went up to like seven, eight people. And they went up so high that they had to kill Donna Troy for some bullshit reason. So maybe it was just that if they put him in there, it may have been just too many storylines. Yeah, too many moving parts. Right. So that was pretty much all I had. Once again, for those who are listening on YouTube, watching on YouTube or whatever, let us know. If you like Titans, if you agree with Titans, what's your rating for this season? Are you going to even watch season four? Um, so let us know. And if you're not watching on YouTube, you can DM us on Instagram as well. But other than that, that was pretty much all I had. What about you guys? That was basically good for me too. Shout out to the lowly casuals. We out here. We keep these movies and series <laughs> alive. Let's stick together. No All, right. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> am I lying though? Casuals are what keep this, keep some of these franchises alive now. You're not. I'm not saying that you're wrong, but also recognize that re the people who read this stuff actually is determined. Yeah. Like the sales of that determine what gets made into movies and slash mm -hmm. series. Yeah. I re I respect y'all though, because if we was talking anime or something else, y'all see a whole other side of me. But I respect it. <laughs> I'm a, right. I'm so. Yeah, but um, 
If there's not anything else, once again, I want to thank you both for being on the show. For those listening or watching, make sure you follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at The Blurred Mob, at T-H-E-B-L-E-R-D-M-O-B. And you can find us on YouTube by that same channel name. So, that's it. And this is The Mob checking out. Peace. Hands up. If you love them, where you at? Stand 10 toes down. Shout out to Anna. Look at me. Hey, don't look at me. You can let them haters hate when they ask them where I'm smiling.